Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I startled you. I was... I was just walking by and... Who are you? I was just... passing by and... and I ran out of water. And I was just wondering if... if you had a room I could rent for the night. My husband... I get it. No worries. Honey? Hi, I'm David. How can we help you? I was just passing by, and, and I ran out of water. I know it's, it's, it's going to be dark soon. I was just wondering if you had a room I could rent for the night. I don't want to impose. <laughs> you walked here? From where? Uh, east of here. Not far. Everywhere's pretty far from here. That's why we like it, especially on weekends like this when we're the only ones up here. I don't want to intrude. No, no, not in the least. Please, stay the night. Take a load off. Uh, I'm assuming you don't have any dinner plans. <laughs> no. I hope my immediate hospitality doesn't strike you as weird. It's just, uh, we haven't had anybody up here for a while. You should stay. It's really the only chance you'll have for a decent meal for a while. So it's settled. You'll stay. Tell Eric you said you were coming from out east. What's west of here for you? Work, kind of. And the whole walking thing? Across the desert seems a little cliche. Cliche. Oh, well, don't get me wrong. It's just that uh, I'm overly familiar with the whole idea of the lost soul roaming across the vast desert in search of a future. I haven't heard that one. Well, it's a, it's a stereotype I would have loved to have fallen under at one point or another. I'm actually jealous of the whole idea of getting lost and being alone. Why would you be? I don't know. The unknown is always so exciting, getting out there. Sinking your teeth into the meat of life? Ultimately in the pursuit of all this. A lake house in the middle of nowhere? A place to call your home. Somewhere that's all for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who knew? An uh, unexpected guest, a new view on life, new appreciation for our home. What do you think, honey? Uh, it's always nice to have people around. Well, the food's great, thank you. Sure. How long you had this place? Uh, five years. We always wanted to get away and this city can be so arduous. Yeah, it can be. It's always nice to kill off a few goals in life. We worked really hard and now we have this place. Well, it's not like everyone has set goals set out before them, ready to be checked off on some list. Some people are just hoping to get through the day in as little pieces as possible. That's so mundane. Survival. Basic and raw is what we're put here to do. Well, I assume you have an opinion on who put us here. Although I don't want to bore my wife with a conversation about God. If we start talking about politics, we'll have covered all the subjects you're not supposed to talk about over the dinner table. <laughs> well, I don't want to be rude. I'm sorry if my questions are so forward. It's just, uh, it's been a while since I've had an honest conversation. What do you do for a living? I'm a psychologist. Well, uh, I would think you're one of the few people who's regularly exposed to honesty. Well, actually, uh, during my sessions, I don't speak very much, but you prefer to honesty like it's some kind of a virus or something. Don't you think it can be? Oh, well, I think honesty should come in reasonable doses, but it's absolutely necessary, especially from us to ourselves. Well, to each their own. This is an open forum. 
Honesty, and I mean brutal, observational honesty, can only lead to pain. When people find out what others actually think about them, they collapse because they realize that people think of them what they actually think of themselves. And the only thing that, that was getting them by was the slight hope that they weren't as horrible as they thought they were. So you're saying that if people said I was, I don't know, um, obsessive, they'd have ruined me. If you had no doubt that your criticisms about yourself were real and not just insecurities, then yes. I'm, what point to life would there be if self-improvement was just <laughs> off the table? I can think of a few. Look, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't talk so much. I don't. I don't like having these conversations. It always gets uncomfortable. You've had enough. Yeah. Enough for sure. Yeah, I have. I really, really have. <laughs> well, I've never met anybody like you, Eric. I mean, you you seem to have everything figured out. Yeah. Well, I think you know that's not true. I'm the one sitting at your dinner table. Yeah, but Eric, you fascinate me. I don't want to be rude, but I think I'm going to turn in. I got a long way to go tomorrow. And well, I haven't figured out what I would pay you for the room. No, 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 no. This conversation has been payment enough. I mean, how could I charge a weary traveler for a room that would otherwise remain empty? Thank you. But you have to answer me one question. Are you happy? That, that's impossible to answer. I think an answer just popped into your head and I want to know what it was. What difference does it make? Well, let's just say I'll die if I don't find out what it is. No. I need an explanation. Are you happy? Absolutely, no question. You couldn't possibly know that. <laughs> well, I know that when I wake up in the morning, I look forward to the day ahead of me, whether it's a hard day or an easy day. And Lord knows I've, we've had some hard days. I think that means I'm happy. Well, I envy your certainty. Tell me, honestly, how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? My answer is hard. My head hurts. And not some minor physical migraine or ache, but a turmoil. Imagine someone screaming at you, hating you. But you can't see them. You can't hear them. You can just feel them. Everyone's face I see reminds me of all the things in my life that I wish were different. And then when I'm alone, I'm terrified. I'm always falling apart and then putting myself back together again. So no, I'm not happy. Happiness is a life without pain. It's life without a fear of pain. I hope I didn't ruin this. Sleep well, Eric. Both candidates refused to comment on the situation. And now over to John with the developing story. John. The search continues for an unidentified man allegedly responsible for the murder of a young couple in Holbrook, Arizona earlier this week. Various reports have allowed the police to narrow down the description of their suspect as a white male between 30 and 35 years of age. Now there is some speculation that this tragedy may be connected to a series of murders, all taking place within the last two months. The identities of the victims have not yet been released, along with any other details of the murder. A spokesman for the State Investigations Unit spoke to the media earlier, ensuring the public that they had their best officers on the case. Thank you, John. More on that story in the middle.
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, coffee? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I just want to apologize for last night. Oh, no need. No, I should be the one apologizing. For my wife, I mean. <laughs> you see, we've been... We've been trying for a child lately, and... Uh, we come close, but we always fail. <laughs> I've been trying to stay... Cheerful and positive, but I feel like I'm just... Driving her crazy, you know? Sorry to hear that. Sometimes I feel like she doesn't even want me around, you know? Like, she wishes she could take it all back. Start over. Well, I'm sure you'll work through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you gonna stay for breakfast? No, I, I gotta get going, thanks. Okay, well, suit yourself. I'm just gonna grab my stuff. Sure, yeah. Ugh! <laughs> 